Prague has always attracted literary, intellectual and scientific minds. Among the best known are the writer Franz Kafka and the astronomer Tycho Brahe. One of the oldest university libraries in Europe was founded here. Today, men like Adolf Knoll want the original works made available to everyone. The Czech National Library's number two man is in charge of creating a digital version. His team has been computer scanning for 10 years with special equipment such as cold light so that 13th century treasures are not damaged in the process. It's far trickier to scan these antique texts than digitize a page in an ordinary book. The biggest difference between a new book and a manuscript is the very lively colors in the old one. Scientists don't only need to read the words, they need the document in the original colors to study the images, the letters and the quality of the paper. In a normal book, the text is the most important thing. For a historic manuscript, it's important to render all the information authentically. Since last year, 18 national libraries have been cooperating to create a European digital library, with community funds helping the project. The very ambitious goal is to have 6 million virtual books by 2010. Knoll's people managed to get around 50 pages done per day. An average book takes a whole week to finish. We've applied for the Enrich program. We're working together with 18 European partner countries, such as Spain, France, the UK, and new member states. In the next three years, we want to pull the data of the different institutions. The material is still very scattered. Together, we will be able to offer researchers an excellent service. To have access to Tycho Brahe's original notes or a rare collection of Persian poems on the Internet, easily available fast, that's the revolutionary goal. Obviously, it makes the manuscripts available for a wider audience, creates competition among scientists. It contributes to better research of these documents. But this is not only about the researchers, it's also about other users. We have very good experience with schools. Digital libraries would also come age-old fears of fire. The Duchess Anna Amalia Library in Weimar, Germany is one painful example. In 2002, more than 50,000 books burnt here. Reading rare books on a laptop computer is the way of the future. While welcoming this, a Czech MEP worries about the money to pay for it. I think it's a very important project because uh, digitalization is um, something which is connected with uh, new uh, technology, new information technology, and uh, we, I think, should support such an activities. And what I'm concerned, uh, I, of course, uh, uh, think that, uh, that we are able to uh, gather of um, money for such an important project, if, uh, if it's uh, so good as uh, seems to be. The European Parliament's Cultural Affairs Committee is presenting a report this month on the whole digital library project. All the political parties are in favour of increasing access to knowledge, but numerous problems have to be resolved such as financing, copyright and different legislation in related matters in the 27 EU member states. All this needs discussing. I think the European Commission has to deal with the ministers of culture. Otherwise, we won't get uniform rules and the digital library will not be really operational. Two years ago, the head of the French National Library firmly opposed accepting money for the project from private companies, as the American firm Google is doing. 
In our eyes, there's a risk of monopoly. We don't want Google to be the only organizer of the world's knowledge. We want to serve cultural diversity by being equally present. Google will forcibly be marked by an Anglo-Saxon bias. The Greens in Parliament understand this objection but are more relaxed about it. I'm not systematically against industry sponsorship. The problem, as we see it, is that in the cultural domain, sponsoring always boils down to paying for extras. Projects decoration, that's where the private sector prefers to invest. Basic financing must be assured from public budgets. If we want to see progress in digitization, and if we really want to reach a large number of European citizens, public contributions won't be enough. It means we would be dependent on private contributions. Knoll is not getting worked up about this. He expects that Google will give something. The Internet company has begun putting 15 million books from American libraries online without charging anything. And Google spent 150 million euros to do it. That's three times the amount the European Commission is spending on the European project. Some at the Parliament have no problem with accepting outside support. I think not. It's only logical because uh, such uh, sources are, are natural because uh, who is uh, interesting in such uh, business uh, firms or subjects which are busy with uh, modern uh, informative technology. But on top of the financing problem, there is still the problem of copyright. Old books are no longer covered by copyright, but an efficient virtual library must give access to today's publications. We already know that digitization and the Internet can lead to illegal downloading. A fair balance has to be found between paying authors who provide the content. When we talk about protecting intellectual property, we're talking about paying. On the other hand, we want to offer free or inexpensive access to the greatest number of people possible in the interest of a knowledgeable society. Digital libraries are only just beginning. Less than 1% of all its resources have been scanned into Europe's computers. After an initial cash infusion from the community budget, the member states now need to decide how they want to continue.